so I'd been planning to do this book club for a while. Um, there's another there's another book that's a bit more advanced that I'm quite interested in doing as well, but I'm going to shelve that for six months. Um, so the 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 content of this, um, it's the the introduction chapter that I'll be taking you all through today um, talks about three main ways of using JavaScript from R. Um, so there's the way whereby you use an existing JavaScript um, front end library to do things like uh, create an interactive data visualization or something like that, that you can't do within R because um, R can't work in the browser. Um, the, the, alter, the, the, the second way is um, whereby you can um, send data to JavaScript and um, use its kind of um, its kind of backend libraries, things like uh, so using um, JavaScript's processing using Node or V8 or something like that to run data processing things that that that, that aren't currently implemented in R, but which reasonably could be. Um, and then the third is um, a little bit more advanced than those two, whereby you'd be sending data from R uh, to JavaScript and from JavaScript back to R, um, much as you do under the hood in Shiny. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about various aspects of JavaScript and why it would be useful for um, our programmers, data scientists, to have a little bit of knowledge of, of JavaScript. And we'll talk about the um, the book, the book club, um, and, and, and go from there. Uh, so there's six of us in the room. Um, uh, we've got Riam, who I work with, and two Ryans, so hopefully that won't be confusing for everyone. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I don't, I don't know um, Lucio, or I don't think I know Arthur, um, but if any of you have been in the book clubs that we run as part of Arthur Data Science, uh, the, the Arthur Data Science community, this will be a, a very similar affair. So over the past couple of years, we've run um, um, book clubs on a number of different R books. Um, last spring, I started off doing Mastering Shiny, and then we did um, a, a, a f further book in a kind of Shiny series on the book club um, engineering production grade applications with, sh with uh, Shiny. Um, Parallel to that, there's a variety of like, you know, statistically themed books that are studied and um, kind of the nuts and bolts of programming in our uh, type book clubs. So things like Advanced R and um, R for Data Science and stuff have been studied as well. Um, this book hasn't yet been studied as a, a book club, so we will be generating the notes for um, subsequent iterations of the book club if, if people want to, to, to do it. Um, yeah, I, I, so the, the, the past couple of book clubs we've done um, uh, have been at the same sort of time of the day, um, which suits me as a host because it's, you know, just after work in the UK. Um, but I know that that means that it, you know, if you're on the other side of the world, it can be a bit of a pain to 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 come to these. Um, although we do get a few people from America, you know, because it might be around lunchtime. Um, I'll try to post more content in the Slack channel so that we um, engage a few more interested parties as well as as we go along. Um, so my name's Russ. Uh, I work for a firm called Jumping Rivers in the UK. Um, and kind of, I'm basically a shiny and R developer. Um, um, I imagine a few of you will have some experience with shiny, um, and certainly 
I I know that um, the you know because of the community that this is hosted in, a lot of you will have some experience with R. If any of you have come to this with a JavaScript background and you want to learn, um, you know how to make things that would be useful for the R community. That would be really interesting, but I'd be surprised if there are many people in that situation here. Um, um, because we did, I mean, we did advertise this book club more widely on Twitter and things like that. Um, so it's not necessarily just going to be people from the R for Data Science community. Um, anyway, so I'm Ross. Uh, would anyone else like to introduce themselves? You're all welcome to uh, do a, a quick pricey. Well, who can I pick on? Ryan, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're working on? Ryan Metcalf, that is. So. I was going to say, which, uh, which Ryan? <laughs> uh, nice to see everyone, um, especially Ryan as well. Uh, we were all in the Mastering Shiny uh, second cohort book club. Uh, Russ and I also continued with the EPGS uh, book club. Looking forward to Russ's uh, uh, mentorship or, or moderation in this particular book club. Uh, I am a training management training manager in the rail industry, um, but my, uh, I guess, inner quest is more data science oriented. So um, a lot to do with R and especially with uh, Shiny and all things web development. Uh, I am a tech writer as well. So that also leads to um, HTML and a lot of the web framework um, infrastructure. So familiar with Node, um, V8 and, and uh, React, um, all things that were referenced in the, in the text as well. So looking forward to this, Russ. Thank you. I can go next um, since we're doing Ryan's right in a row. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I joined uh, Ryan Metcalf on that on a Mastering Shiny book club and maybe eight months ago or, or a little bit more than that. But that quickly got uh, too, too advanced for me. I didn't have a web development background or anything like that. Um, and so, and so I sadly uh, left that, um, that book club behind, or I should say postponed it. And in the meantime, did a crash course on web development, got a little bit more familiar with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, at least now I know, you know, which direction they all point. Um, and so then I saw this book club come up and thought, you know, I'm, I probably still don't know enough, but let me join it and see, um, see how it goes. So. I'm based in Houston, Texas, and um, this time works out fine for me, so so no problems. Anyway, it's great to see everybody. Right. Um, Shall I go from uh, Ryan's to Rianne? Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Rianne. Uh, like Russ said, uh, I work at Jumping Rivers as well, and um, although I used to do quite a bit of shiny development, I'm doing less and less of that day to day now. So I guess my interest is more I'm trying to get my head around the interface between kind of those, you know, the, the front end and web elements and and sort of traditional R shiny usage and work out kind of where the two play well together and where they don't in terms of more of a, I guess, at a company level where we can help and, and where when, what sort of projects we should be doing so that side um i tried to go along to the javascript for shiny workshop when i was at our studio conf in 2020 um but i ended up doing some tier on a different one instead so i sort of worked through that one myself um but it's nice to have the formulaic kind of book side to go through with yeah um arthur or lucio i can see that you're muted and your video is off but if you Either of you'd like to introduce yourself? If you if you don't want to, that's perfectly reasonable. Um, anyway, okay, great. Um, I, I can jump in really quickly oh, yeah, if that's great. okay. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so Arthur Shaw, um, I work at the the World Bank uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, and so I find myself doing a lot of uh, shiny applications and uh, working with a lot of uh, I guess. Uh, packages that kind of delve into the JavaScript ecosystem, like a React, React table or Reactable, however one pronounces that. Um, so I was just uh, generally curious, given that I'm working some of the web development space, 
uh, with with uh, with shiny, uh, you know, how I could dive a little bit deeper into into JavaScript from the things that I I, I know a little bit. Thanks. Back to you guys. Okay, great. And our last attendee is Lucio. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Yeah. Uh, my name is Lucio. Um, I am a mathematics undergraduate from Latin America. Uh, I have a little bit of experience with Shiny um, JavaScript, so I wanted to learn, for example, how one can handle the sending of JavaScript variables to R and back and forth. Yeah, cool. Okay, great. Um, right. Um, so I'll, I'll share my screen. I've got some notes. Um, they were all, uh, they're all ready up on the um, shared notes page. Um, which I can, I'll, I'll put in the chat, although it's, well, copy that link. Um, so if you go here, the, this is the, the URL where, um, as we're working through a, a, the, the book club, we will be um, adding a kind of summary of, of each chapter to the, to these books book notes that are hosted on github um the the notes themselves are, are written in r markdown and can be uh, compiled into a book down you know a, a book um for for delivery online um they're just to help guide the sessions so that you know we we cover a good amount of the content of each chapter. The chapters in this book are, are relatively short, I think. Um, but I'd still like, you know, for the for the first few weeks at least, to do a chapter a week. I don't I don't think it's a good idea to overstuff the content of these book club meetings because if you try and cover too much in one meeting, it kind of limits the chance of. Um, you know, getting input from everyone because if the you know if the speaker's trying to rush just to get through all their notes, um, it doesn't leave a lot of gaps for other people to jump in with their ideas. Um, so I'll, I've posted the URL for the notes, and there should also be a URL for the GitHub site. Hold on, if I find that for you. Um, the Sorry, There's also a link within book down in, in the upper right. I think it points ah, to the yes. repo. Yeah. Okay. Um, brilliant. Um, so if I share my screen then instead. Okay. So right. So this is um, this is my kind of locally compiled version of the, the the notes. I've added some stuff for the first chapter. Um, Yes, um, so the, the book that we're working through, um, the, there's a hyperlink to, um, it can say the, the version online um, is, <laughs> it, it contains all of the content of the book, but you know, you can, you can get the book if you want, because it's quite nice to be able to annotate things and, and whatnot. But, um, but the, the version of the book that I've got uh, is all is like the paperback version and like all the figures in the book and there's a lot of like data visualization and stuff like that all of the figures are in black and white so there's there's some figures in here that really you can't di distinguish uh the, there was one in the first chapter where you put in a um you know like a kind of an image of a shiny app that had a spinner, you know, like a kind of waiting thing spinning around. An image of that on the uh, in there, and it's just a black a black rectangle in the the printout I've got. Um, okay, right. So um, we're going to run the book club meetings once a week, um, and for the foreseeable, they're going to be at this time. Um, Ideally, we'd have a volunteer each week to present a chapter from the book. And that's how I plan it. I don't think it will be necessary to do subparts of chapters in this book because of how, because I think the chapters are a good length 
Um, but if it does get to a point where it feels like the the chapters are um, imbalanced, you know, if there's more content in one than in another, we may merge weeks together and, and things. Um, there's a GitHub repository. Um, so if you're the volunteer for a week, um, go, uh, kind of clone the GitHub repository or, or you know, fork it and then clone it. Um, add some content to the relevant chapter that you're planning to present and then push it back up to, to GitHub. And either myself or John from Arthur Data Science will merge the content into the book and eventually it will you know populate out to the the, the the kind of published version of these notes i am always a bit wary you know because this is a book that you know it is under copyright um so i, I urge you not to copy large chunks of content from the book into the book notes because it can cause you know copyright issues um but if it's just a you know an example bit of code or something like that then by all means put it in and, and i mean it's fairly obvious that the content mirrors the content in the book itself um but yeah don't copy too much stuff um if you're nervous about it we could possibly work out a way of getting around it but um if you've volunteered for a week the the presentation that you give will be recorded for youtube and um so there's dozens of videos where i'm gradually getting more stressed talking about bits of shiny that i don't quite understand on youtube already but the point of the book club is to learn so don't worry about like a appearing to understand things that you don't necessarily understand we're here to kind of question ideas and kind of learn things together um but yeah if you don't want to appear on youtube um i don't know i mean the i'm not entirely certain how we could do it but i i'll, I'll discuss it with john but hopefully it won't be an issue because i can't imagine you would sign up for the book club if you were nervous about appearing on YouTube. Um, anyway, so there's that. Uh -huh. Right, we've already covered that. So chapter one, um, this is a very brief chapter. Um, so, um, so these are the basically the learning objectives. This is the first bit here is the stuff that I've already covered, which isn't chapter content. Um, the purpose of this chapter is to learn, get a kind of overview of why JavaScript may be a useful tool for you to have as an R developer and introduce a little bit of, of the, you know, the available libraries that JavaScript can provide. Um, discuss a couple of R packages that already use JavaScript and the, 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 the sense in which they use JavaScript. And I've added a little bit towards the end of this where I've added in some links to things like JavaScript training material and stuff like that. The, the author is at pains to explain that this book will not teach you how to be a JavaScript programmer. It um, will show you enough of the JavaScript syntax for you to like wrap a JavaScript library such that it can be used from R. But, um, you know, <laughs> to uh, expect to come out of this as a, an expert in JavaScript would probably be a little bit um, too much. Um, so it's written for our programmers who want to use JavaScript tools within their day-to-day -day R programming. Um, it doesn't cover, it doesn't have things like a, um, you know, an introduction to the JavaScript syntax and things like that, that you might expect in, an, in a book that has this name. But um, uh, yeah, so, and that's why I put in this stuff on 
JavaScript training material. There is an abundance of JavaScript training material out in the world, though. Not all of it will be relevant to this book, though. Right, so um, in the kind of as, as programming entities, R and JavaScript have quite different responsibilities. Um, and um, basically, JavaScript came into the world as um, a language that you could use within the browser in, in, in like the, you know, a web browser from on a on a user's computer. So you might write a program that is hosted on some server on the internet. A user can download, you know, access pages from that uh, server, but uh, JavaScript is running in their browser and providing the kind of interactive um, um, essence of a web page. Um, why is that useful, though, as an R developer? Um, so um, firstly, there's, there's a couple of ways by which R can create content that is, um, that is um, provided to the user via the browser. So um, our markdown can be converted to HTML files. Um, shiny apps themselves um, can be viewed from the browser. So a lot of this stuff, a lot of the, um, the, the kind of downstream outputs of our work um, are presented to the user through the browser. And knowing a bit of JavaScript can can help in terms of like um, providing, you know, kind of improving the user experience for them. Um, in, a, in a parallel development in the JavaScript world, um, there is now a way to run JavaScript in the, the back end. So rather than kind of running um, solely within a browser, JavaScript can run on the server side of a web application um, or can be run as a kind of command line um, uh, language. Um, so JavaScript's kind of role in the world has extended beyond simply being stuck within the browser. Um, and as such, uh, it has a bunch of tools th that could be used um, for kind of data processing and stuff like that, that R doesn't yet provide um, kind of natively. Um, so an example of that um, here is this map shaper library. If I pull, sorry, the R map shaper library. Um, so um, this is an R package that wraps around a tool called MapShaper. Um, and MapShaper is a, a, a way to kind of, um, it to perform kind of analytic tasks on the, um, the, the kind of, uh, what would you call it? Like the shape files and stuff that define how a map is con constructed. Um, so MapShaper itself, when it was first written, provided a, a to provided a tool that wasn't yet available in R, or uh, maybe not as easily usable from R. But it's a um, it's solely a, like a kind of data processing type thing. Um, so it's something that could reasonably be called as a like a command line utility. Um, as such, um, this developer here um, added a package that wraps around MapShaper and which you can call from an R session. Um, so that's an example of something that JavaScript could do 
once upon a time that R couldn't at the time, and which by wrapping that library in an R package, you make that tool available to an R. To hey, an R Russ? Yes, yes. If you don't mind me interrupting, I, I have oh, another yeah. example of that JavaScript sort of relationship. So diagram R uh, is a method for drawing vector graphics kind of- I, I, uh, I have been fighting with that for the past two days. Have you? Okay. <laughs> well, the, the other option, if you were in a, a classic markdown type format or HTML type format, mermaid.js is another relationship that builds that same concept. It's a JavaScript library mm. uh, that is able to render these same diagrams. Now, I can't confirm uh, uh, just yet if they are the same library or they're just interacting with each other. But um, mermaid.js is another yeah. example of a JavaScript library that gives you the same options as diagram R does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a, a syntax. Mermaid JS provides a kind of syntax that that is used within Diagram R. I'm I'm not entirely certain whether it necessarily calls Mermaid JS from Diagram R, but it, it certainly Good looks point. the um, the same. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's a perfectly perfect good example hold on i'll pull that out so mermaid here what you do is say if you're defining like a flow diagram or um you know a kind of class diagrams or something like that you can build them computationally within r by calling um a, a, via a package called diagram r and um the syntax that's used in there is very similar to um the syntax used in this mermaid js so quite feasibly it is calling that in the um back end right um yes so that's um the other thing that you might want to learn javascript for as an r developer is that it will give you um a um it will help you to communicate things to an audience. So there are um, like interactive graphics and stuff that simply aren't possible in R on its own, um, which um, by wrapping those kind of interactive tools from R, um, you can provide things like, you know, um, the, um, approaches that, that Plotly uses. Um, so I don't know, you, presumably you'll know a little bit, but if you've never used Plotly, um, it's a, a kind of interactive data visualization type um, tool. I'm trying to find an example of the kind of thing that you might do. So, um, so it's a way of um, having a data visualization in the browser that the user can click on, um, manipulate, move around, and things like that. Um, stuff that isn't so trivial to do in base R. Um, right. So um, the next section of the book, uh, of the chapter was about the different ways that you might integrate JavaScript with R. Um, so um the the tool that we mentioned there um map shader is a tool that is is run uh sorry it's a way of running javascript code from r so the way that would work is like you're providing data to javascript upon which it does some computation um, this is made possible using a, a packet, an R package called V8, and V8 is the same name as the JavaScript engine that it calls, um, and that V8 engine is something that powers uh, the Chrome browser and Node.js and, and things like that. Um, so this package V8. Um, is 
a way to um, da, 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 what's that one? so it's um, it's it's a tool that you might use if you if you find a JavaScript library that does something that you want to be able to but you want to be able to call it from R, you might consider wrapping it in using this V8 library to call that library from your R package. Um, yeah. Right, okay, so what's that? Russ, okay. yeah. Russ can I ask you a quick question? Yes, always, yeah. yeah. That help my understanding. So, so do these tools, do they help make JavaScript, because JavaScript runs in a browser, but R doesn't have a way of running in a browser. So far, so good, right? So, mm. um, so do these tools make that JavaScript as it's running in a browser, make that available to R? Or do these tools simulate JavaScript running in a browser within the R environment? So the question being like, where's, where's home base? Is it the browser and R is reaching into the browser or is home base R and there's some kind of simulation to make it look like it's um, like it's a, a browser. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Um, so for, for this type of for the, the projects like our map shaper, um, they aren't they aren't running um, they aren't running JavaScript in the browser. Um, so if you if you actually look at our studio itself and the Chrome browser, they're actually built using JavaScript. And um, the the V8 engine is a way of like running JavaScript code um, um, it, it, it's a way of running JavaScript code, say, you could do it on the command line, say, you could do it, um, be, you know, it could be the process that's running upon which, you know, like an Electron app is, is built or a, a browser is built. So it's a, a lower level than the browser itself. But um, when you open a browser, but you know, you can then open a browser that's running on V8, and inside a web page that you open on that browser, it's a separate JavaScript um, runtime that that's running. I mean, uh, maybe Ryan might know better than me. Um, no, that's a it's an outstanding question, Ryan. I, I I really appreciate you asking. So when Russ was explaining kind of the the stack, right? Your your operating system stack. Imagine that your JavaScript library is this, I don't know, mechanism to uh, relate calls to the CPU. So you're always going to go up to a higher order language or down to a lower level, and eventually you'll get to machine code, right? So machine code, then you've got your, your uh, what's that called? It starts with an A. Uh, architecture comes to mind, but that, that's not right. And then a, assembly, thank you, assembly code. And then above that would be C code. Above that would be you know possibly JavaScript. So what I'm expressing in this stack tied concept is this, uh, protocol translation from one particular language of human readable form or human activity down to the actual CPU itself. Um, just as a quick example, uh, Russ mentioned that the uh, RStudio environment uh, that you're, you're actively pursuing, if you right click and say inspect element, it's going to open up a browser. It's, I don't know what version, if it's Chrome or, or exactly what the browser default is by RStudio, but you'll see all of the active elements inside. Um, Russ, I don't know if you want to yeah. try that or if it's even important, but um, it's so what? Yeah. yeah, funny you mentioned it. I did, I, I'm going through um, Mastering Shiny separately and I did this for the first time just last night. So I. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So <laughs> What we see happening here is, is your RStudio session as a quote unquote program, right? Your, your native idea of what a program would be, whether it be the browser, whether it be the RStudio session, whether it be something else. When you go into these inspect elements or when you drop down into the actual programming language end of it, you can start seeing the relationship. And so talking about VA, talking about Node.js, talking about React, Ember, or any other JavaScript, JavaScript library, 
that's actually what is happening here is this relationship between what we would normally view as a you know very beautiful elegant style of programming and then into this raw coding style of uh, data exchange it's an outstanding question i'll try I'll do my best to uh link or relate uh, the the two together okay. yeah um yes so um so the so this uh, way of running JavaScript code from R it, it is akin to the way that you might run um, Python code from R using Reticulate, say. Um, the the next um, method that they talk about is where you where JavaScript provides a library that its sole purpose is to run within the browser. Be that, say, to present data visualization or maps or something like that to the user. Um, and what you need to do is send R, send data from R to JavaScript such that your users can then view that in the browser and interact with it interact with the JavaScript that's sitting in the browser that is presenting data that you fed it from R. Um, so that's the kind of way of sending data from R to the, the front end of a, of a browser. Um, a library, uh, sorry. What are, what are called packages in R and that you load using the command library are called libraries in JavaScript. Um, so I might end up tripping myself up. Um, right, so if you load, uh, sorry, if there is a tool like that, like Plotly or uh, data tables or high charts that um, ostensibly runs within the browser, you may call you may wrap it you may wrap that javascript library um using a tool called html widgets which is an r package um i'll bring that the website for that over um so this is a way of um you know sending data from R to the browser for for a, a, in a kind of one dimensional way such that um, the user can then you interact with a JavaScript library that is accessing your, the data you fed it. Um, this form of interaction with JavaScript code is kind of the the stuff that's covered in the first section of the book really um and yeah i mean there's ton there's so many javascript libraries for this kind of thing and javascript probably more so than r has such a rapid attrition rate for um libraries that um that you know what may be the best tool for um visualizing maps this year might be completely unheard of in two years time um anyway um and then the final way um that you might integrate javascript with r is by this kind of bi-directional communication so you have a one-dimensional communication where you're sending data from r to a kind of back-end javascript library you have um, a one-dimensional communication where you're sending data from R to, um, you know, view it through the browser um, via a JavaScript library. And this final one is more kind of typical of Shiny development, where you're sending data back and forth between R basically being the back end of, of a, a web application and JavaScript running in the browser. So the data is traveling back and forth. Things that the user's typing in or clicking on in the browser are being sent 
back to um, the the server side R instance. Um, computations then being done in the server side and sending more values back to the browser. So that's a kind of bi-directional communication. Um, and the second section of the book talks about um, using kind of inter integrating um, JavaScript code with Shiny and things in, in, a, in a lot more detail. The example that they gave here was um, the waiter package, um, which is, oh, I thought it would go to the, which is a kind of a nice little set of tools for putting in, um, what's the example? Oh, where are we? There, right there. So these are kind of loading screens basically for use in Shiny applications. Um, so say your R session is downloading a big file from some server. Um, as it's as it's progressing, as it's downloading content, it could be sending um, information to the browser to uh, update a kind of loading screen like this, to so that your users know that something important's going on and that they should just stick it out and wait for the the whatever's happening to, to, to finish. Um, because if you leave them with a blank screen, <laughs> just close the application and assume it's broken. Um, yeah. Right, anyway, um, so that's three different ways that we might use JavaScript. There are a few additional ways that you might use JavaScript from R that aren't really covered in this book. Um, so what they don't cover is how to um, how to best integrate R with a specific JavaScript tool, be that a um, like a front end framework like React or Vue, or be that a specific you know visualization library. There are tools already um, in existence for like interacting you know. Uh, for interacting with a React um, application or, um, or or with the view framework from R. Similarly, there's a, a good package for interacting with the D3 uh, visualization library. Most of the examples throughout the book, though, are where there's a, like a relatively small library. D3 has such a rich API that I, it, it wouldn't really be possible to write a, a kind of simple project that wraps that, I don't think. Um, so um, yes, so, so the book doesn't really talk about how to s speak to a specific JavaScript library. It provides kind of generic tools whereby you might send data to a particular uh, JavaScript library, or you might you know, kind of generic tools for in for bi-directional communication within Shiny. Um, and yes, finally, some. Uh, oh. Sorry, if I, if I may interrupt uh, to take you back, kind of one one page, just out of yeah. curiosity, are, are you aware of any? Um, so I, I well understand kind of the scope of the book. Uh, you know, as regards to you know what's not covered in the book, are you aware of any? Uh, you know, jots on the internet that might kind of point people how to go down the path of working better with, you know, uh, the React framework or Vue framework. I, I would suppose that, you know, those packages themselves might have kind of a getting started or a for developer section, but I was wondering if you're aware of any 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 other resources that might point in that direction. Thanks. I, um, I must admit, I am not an expert with either React or Vue. And um, I have never had to interact with them from R personally. Um, but um, so if we look in um, introductions, 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of vignettes in the Reactar um, um, package page, um, and we. So, um, yeah, um, yeah, I, to be honest, I, I don't know very much about this. It's not a, 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 a rabbit hole I've gone down yet. Um, they, what else is, who, who was the author there? Kent Russell. Kent Russell wrote the um, the the library that links to View as well. Um, I, I believe. Oh no, yes, Kent Russell. Um, I I don't know of anything that covers that specific thing. At, at present, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't even know if there's an appendix that covers it in this book. Uh, no, I don't think there is. Um, oh, actually, actually, there's a little bit on using view with Shiny, and um, there may be a little bit on React towards the end of this book, but um, yeah, if you want a tutorial that's more geared towards interacting with React, the you know the the React framework. I I don't know at present, but I can have a look and I can ask around on the um... Twitterverse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Russ, I was spamming our chat window trying to answer um, uh, Arthur's question. Okay. I posted three links. Uh, I think the third one, the React JS tutorial, might be the best. Uh, path to start with, but I posted two other links and know that this is not me. I'm actually just doing a copy and paste from Twitter. I found this particular post really interesting. Uh, this particular thread was listing out all these different JavaScript library front end, back end type uh, uh, web creation tools. And so I, I, those are three that jumped out at me related to React. I hope that helps, Arthur. Very much so. Thanks, Russ uh, and Ryan, both for, for the answers. Cool, cool. Um, uh, yes, so I was going to show a little bit of code. Um, there are a couple of example bits of code in the um, in the book. So, um, for example, um, library, if I do... Right, so what this has done, library v8, makes a connection to the a, a javascript engine that's running and with that you can um you can sorry that there has made a connection to the va engine um this function here um so if we okay um and with that I can do some really complicated um, JavaScript um, and get a value back to um, R. So this here has been sent to the JavaScript engine, evaluated, and passed back to R. Um, it's passed back a, a string rather than a um, number, but you know we can we can deal with that um so that's if that at, at, at its heart that's how you can call a javascript library a javascript code from within an r session there is also an example of using um a plotly histogram from r um and the source code i copied into the um the notes here so if i run that and i put the suppress package messages just because it it prints quite a bit of blurb 
when you load up the plot, be presumably because it's a built on a commercial package. Um, and then here, Plotly itself, um, if I do. So this takes our objects and sends them to the Plotly um, library. Plotly will then make your, so this would be a histogram generated here. Plotly will make your histogram viewable interactable or whatever, however you'd call it within the browser so here the diamond status that's used throughout our um, and right um, so but as we said earlier on our studio itself is built on it, it it's um, it's it's built on um, JavaScript, so you can actually um, view this as if it, you know, you can think of our studio as if it was a browser. Um, and with that, we can see that there is, where have I got? Ah, no, what was I going to do? I was going to... Um, I was going to show you. So if I um, compiled the whole of the book down book that we, we have these book notes in, um, it would look like this. Um, so I can actually view that in the browser um, and go forward to that figure and oh my god where are we here right so this plotly thing is now you can see that it's in the browser and we can inspect that element um, and see that there is um, da -da, where are we um, GCG, where are we plotly container plotly there um, so this is an HTML element that contains the whole of that histogram. Sitting above it is an HTML element that was generated by HTML widget. HTML widget is the kind of um, R package that you use to wrap these front-end JavaScript libraries if you want to send data just from R to the front end, to the browser. Um, and you can see that there's like a kind of random identifier generated for that plot um, and nested within that HTML widget element, you have the, um, the plotly plot and also you have a kind of, ooh, sorry, I thought the, oh yeah, and just after it, the um, script that um, explains how to use HTML widget on the browser side is loaded into um, the, the, um, the effectively the web page. Um, yeah, so so that's a pretty simple bit of code that you looks just like any other R code, but with it, it generates a um, interactive plot that you can view in the browser. Um, yeah. Uh, were there any other example bits of code? Yeah, there's, there's some example, an example shiny app to add a, um, a, a kind of load page button. But I think we'll skip that until the the, the shiny section of the um, book. Um, yes, I, I added a little bit of resources here. Um, so although the author does say that, you know, the, the book itself isn't going to teach you JavaScript, and also it may not be necessary for it to do so, for you to take advantage of JavaScript libraries that are already out in the world. Um, 
you you may not need to know much JavaScript in order to do that, um, but you will need to know how to use the R tools that that are capable of wrapping those JavaScript libraries. Um, awesome lists are always good a, a good place to start. Um, there is a, a a bunch of different data visualization. Um, libraries available in JavaScript for things like, um, um, you know, so this, I used to use Cytoscape when I was a bioinformatician quite a lot. Um, it's a way of presenting, um, you know, network data um, and, and, and analyzing network data. Um, so you could write a wrapper around cytoscape.js if you wanted to generate interactive um, graph visualizations in uh, from R. Um, right, so that's an awesome list containing various libraries that you might consider as a, a, a candidates for things that you might want to call from R. MDN has, uh, sorry, the Mozilla Dev Developer Network has some very good notes for learning a lot of the kind of front-end technologies, HTML and CSS and JavaScript, and, you know, things allied to that. Um, their, <laughs> their JavaScript notes um, are somewhat more stable than JavaScript itself. So there are... Um, there there are there is new syntax for various bits of javascript that are introduced um that have recently been introduced which aren't yet covered in these tutorials but everything that is covered in these tutorials can still be done in javascript so uh things like you know how you define a class how you um map over a list of data and things like that you, uh, kind of the nuts and bolts of the, the JavaScript language are, are covered in here, as are things that may be foreign to an R programmer, things like asynchronous computing and, and, and things like that that are quite common in um, a, a kind of web development world. Um, yes, so I'm a, a big fan of the Mozilla uh, notes. Um, this is a a book written by um, Colin Fay. It's just a bunch of like um, helpful, um, you know, how to know enough JavaScript to do it, uh, things that, you know, might be of value in a Shiny app. Um, so it might be handling events that are sent by the server side of a shiny app to the front end and, and things like that um yes so that's a pretty that's a pretty good resource too um and oh yeah there's an additional thing so the this book doesn't really cover much of the um the the specifics of like using um javascript in an r markdown document um and R Markdown is quite a common way of generating browser side um, content from R. Um, so I've added a link to this chapter of the, um, the R Markdown definitive guide. It's a little bit more terse than JavaScript for R is though, um, but will explain how to use um, the kind of JavaScript libraries within an HTML document that's created from an R Markdown um, document. Um, I think that's that. Um, yes, cool. Um, I will add in the meeting video, the chat log and things like that to the, the uh, book notes as well. Um, but yeah, so that's the first chapter. It's really just an overview of the kinds of things that you can do with JavaScript um, from R. Um, the different um, approaches require different um, tools to, 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 to do that. 
Um, and yeah, and we'll be learning how to use V8 and HTML widgets and a little bit more about um, shiny and bi-directional communication as well um, as we work through this book. Um, yeah, cool. Thanks for coming, everyone. If anyone's got any uh, questions or chat or anything, um, I'm happy to stick around for a few minutes. Um, yeah. So uh, have there been any questions? Because I didn't really watch the chat as it was going on. Have I, have I missed anything that was UCL or DDS? It's bi-directional communication. Right, OK. Um, in R, there are alternative web frameworks. I know that um, the, 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 I think the fellow who, the, I think John Cohn wrote a web framework that is distinct from Shiny, but which could do bi-directional communication. I'll find out again. Um, was um, is that right? As you're catching up, Russ, it has been a very healthy uh, communication in the chat. Um, both private messages and public everyone messages. <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, um, well, it has to be because you all clicked the, uh, you know, the little box right. that says we will be polite during this meeting. <laughs> I was going to, uh, I was going to make a comment, uh, and and I'll try to find an exact uh, post related to this. If the document that we're reading uh, starts to touch on any node related activities. Mm. Um, I would not recommend post or uh, committing all of your node library to GitHub. Um, that's actually really not optimal. Um, all you need to do is source your packages.json uh, file. And then the next user, when they uh, pull your code down and actually just do an install, um, yeah. Yeah. It, will, it will pull down all the node related activities uh, for that, uh, that service. I'll try to post something related to that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, much like with um, the RN um, package in R, uh, where it will populate a huge directory within your project if you allow it to, and you shouldn't check that in because, you know, it, it will be considerably bigger than your own project is. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, yes, uh, t towards the end of the book, there is stuff on um, Webpack and npm and, and things like that that are um, used for packaging libraries within javascript i think that's right at least and bundlers and things um yeah uh so yeah no that's good advice um okay cool yes um right so yes there are alternative web frameworks in r um beyond shiny so certainly bi-directional communication is 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 feasible beyond shiny but shiny makes it a little bit you know it's quite particularly well documented compared with the rest um brilliant right i hope to see you all next week possibly some others uh if i can um I'll, I'll put a little summary of what we covered today in the chat and i'll update the notes to contain the various links that that, that that will be automatically generated when we close this um yes chapter two is like uh, it, it's a study of the uh, prerequisites for the rest of the book so there's four main topics that are treated as a kind of prerequisite for the book um the json which is like a way of and you know of transferring data between um processes so it, it, it's kind of a, quite common to transfer data between to the front end using json um there is uh shiny if if any of you don't have much experience with shiny i can provide some pointers but um it it it's more for the kind of second part of the book that um, the 
third thing is package development in R. Um, so we'll, we'll cover that in brief. And then what was the final thing? JavaScript. Not JavaScript. Not sorry. sorry. Yes. <laughs> JavaScript was a prerequisite. Um, yes. Um, cool. Um, yes, I'll probably be trying to get a volunteer for various weeks in the future. There is a little um, sign up sheet that's pinned at the top of the um, the, the channel in, in the Alpha Data Science Slack. Um, but I, I don't think we have any volunteers at the moment for any future weeks, but you know, when no one volunteers, I have to do it. So I'm very keen to get as many volunteers as possible. Right, anyway, but I'll see you all next week um, and I'll update the notes and everything. Wonderful to have some people come along this week. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to learning the, the, the stuff in this book. Um, Cheers, Russ. Cheers, cheers. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Russ.